Hello everyone. Uh, getting ready to go do a preventative maintenance uh, job. I sold them a maintenance agreement. Uh, furnace is pretty neglected. Um, uh, yeah, it's the house smells like cigarette smoke and cat pee. So it's uh, it gave me a headache after being there a little bit. And good thing you guys don't have smell a vision because it was pretty bad. But you know it is what it is. It comes with the territory. Um, so I'll get you some shots of what I do. I'm going to pull the blower motor out, uh, probably replace the blower motor because it was grunting, uh, just neglect, bad filters, all that stuff. I'm going to probably be cleaning out the secondary heat exchanger because I have a feeling that's going to be dirty. Um, checking gas pressures and uh, combustion analyst, all that stuff. Uh, you know, for all you seasoned vets out there, uh, let me know how you guys do it. Um, if I'm doing it like you guys do, great. If not, then let me know if I'm doing something wrong. If, uh, you know, if I need to do something different, let me know. Uh, we all learn from each other, and I really appreciate all the feedback. See you in a little bit. So I just got here to do this maintenance plan and the blower is finally took a poop. So that's what I'm going to be doing is changing that. That's going to be the first thing I do. Make some room. So I just replaced this board Friday night. The description is going to be right here. I'm gonna set wires are on the bus. So I'm gonna have to take all these off again.
getting closer. It's pretty dirty, pretty dirty. So I'm gonna brush that off and then um, I'm going to, I'm gonna be using a little bit of this here, not a lot, just enough to break up some of that grease and nicotine and all that stuff. Um, that'll help everything. Yeah, just spray some more of that coil cleaner on this, just kind of wipe it up. I mean, I'm, I'm looking at, you know, if you don't spend at least an hour to two and a half hours on a piece of equipment, especially when they're paying for it, they just don't feel that they're getting a the value on this. So that's why I go above and beyond. Look at that nicotine. That's just disgusting. stuff what I like to do is over to take this take this uh, set screw off or not off just loosen it up and see how tight it's gonna be oh man this is gonna be great oh there it goes This has been on here for a minute, so you know, sometimes you got to put some WD-40 or Croy oil on this. We'll see how we'll see how this one works. It's a little stiff, so. <clears throat> Okay. I'm going to verify too, <clears throat> just to show you guys. <clears throat> I'm going to check the capacitor as well, but the motor is stiff. To check the capacitor, you want to put it on MFD microfarads on your meter. Yeah, the capacitor is good, so it's the motor 10.16. Ten point one six one five, so we're good with that. This is a ten, so we're capacitors are not the issue. It's the motor. Let's 
So just a little tidbit on these JCI furnaces, you work Luxair Guardian. If you ever got to change these blowers or move them out, always loosen this bracket up just a little bit so you get a little bit of clearance. Otherwise, you're fighting. Um, you can see how I got this loosened. Because if it's tight, it will not go in. You'll fight it all day long. So and this is where you run your screw up for your bracket to tighten you know, the blower deck. So you got a tip. Just unloosen that just a little bit. See what I did with the screws? Oh, there they are. They're over there in the corner. So you got your neutral, that goes on the neutral area, neutralis. Blue, I'm gonna put on heat. And that may vary at different applications. I'm gonna put reds usually low. I'm going to put that on park. And I'm going to put yellow on park. And then black is high. Uh, this one here is a three ton, so I get the three ton speed for 1200 CFMs. Like that. And I'll get a zip tie. Tie all this up to make it nice and neat. I got two zip ties. blower all right <clears throat> oh
All right, now that I got that blower done, I'm gonna start going through and testing stuff. Uh, I like to test my igniter first because it's been off. So you switch your your meter to ohms. If I can get this thing to read all right. Oh yeah, she's she's about had it. See it's over a hundred hundred. So it's over 100. It's it's time to replace the igniter. Anything over 100, it's going to be spent. So being this is a service agree agreement customer, I'm going to replace the igniter, and he's going to get 15% off repairs. Um, and this also saves me from having to come out in the middle of the night, no charge. So this is why it's very important to go through this process. So I'm going to go get a new igniter and put that on. So as you see, that this is white here. That eventually went out. Um, being this is a maintenance contract customer, I would much rather replace it. They get 15% off repairs. And because I don't charge, when they're on a contract, I don't charge any service call or after hours call. Um, so this will save me from having to come out on any calls because I'm, I'm catching it now. said I'll show you once again and this this is the old one see 104.7 ohms and this is the new one fifty six point two ohms like I said, that'll rise once it get reaches it reaches up to temperature. Very important do not touch that because you'll break it the oils off your fingers will make it crack so those that you don't know about these so 120 volts gets tied into here from the board sends 120 volts in this glow this is what glows red this is what lights your burners This back in here is going to be great. Oh, yeah. Most generally, you don't have to take the manifold off, but in this situation, it made it a little bit easier to do that.
All right, getting ready to do, uh, check gas pressures, do a combustion tune on this. As you can see, we're, we're high. You want to slowly turn down that adjustment screw. Me personally, I like them about three, three point four, three point four thereabouts. It says on here max is three point five, and we were way over fired. So I'm going to start my combustion tune, got that up in the pipe, it's been running for a few minutes so As you can see, the O2 is dropping, which is good. The CO is low. The efficiency is 96.5, and the CO2 is 6.8. Now, if we go on this on these backer racks, these are these are really cool. So you can go over here, and it gives you a chart of what's going on. And then this, as long as you're in the green, you're good to go. Once that turns green, we'll be good. So it'll it'll take a few minutes, but yeah, this this pretty much helps you dial things right in. Now obviously, I've noticed on a few furnaces, um, this can be low the CO. And this will be high, which means we possibly have a breach in the heat exchanger. But this is good. This is looking good. This is looking good. Now, just for showing you. So I'm at 3.26. I'm going to adjust this gas pressure a little bit. And we can see what will happen here to the numbers on the combustion. I'm going to raise them just a little bit. That lowers. We're in the green now, so that's good.
This unit's dialed right in. Yeah, these backer racks are nice, the Insight Plus. Um, they're a little bit cheaper than Testos. Testos are really good. I have a Testo as well, but I really like this one once I figured out how to use it. I also like to use a uh, company cam. Um, this basically allows me to record my measurements. There. And then I can just save this to my folder, which will go to House Call Pro app for my customer. Okay, so I just shut the gas off. I'm going to tighten up the test port. Like I said in my other video, when I did my other maintenance video, You always want to make sure that's tight. And there's your adjustment screw right there. All right, guys, there you go. Leave your thoughts and feedback in the comment section below if you would have done anything different. Um, if I forgot something, please, please let me know what I forgot. Uh, I really appreciate to hear your feedback. Um, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.